In January of 2015, I was working in Freetown, Sierra Leone, and it was the height of the Ebola outbreak in that city. And everyone was really afraid. And unfortunately, that fear translated into a policy of containment using quarantines. And very large number of people, entire families, entire communities were placed under quarantine. And it meant that they were essentially locked into their homes. And there wasn't a very good plan for how to get food and water and medical care to them. My team was going from quarantine to quarantine and interviewing people to see if they had what they needed to survive for that period. And what we found is virtually no one had just the basics that they needed. There were pregnant women who were locked into quarantines and they didn't know where they would go to be able to deliver their baby safely. We had situations where families were in a quarantine without access to a latrine. We had a huge database showing how many people were lacking basic necessities, but no one was really listening to us when we were trying to advocate for increasing their access to food and water and healthcare. So we gave the database to the GIS officer who was working with us, and he mapped it. And all of a sudden we had a visualization of where people were and what they needed in each of those areas. When we went to the official meeting, we put the map on the table and we had a copy for everyone. And all of a sudden they could see exactly what we were talking about and they couldn't be ignored anymore. People actually had to change policies and change the way that they were operating in order to meet the needs of people who are under quarantine. GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. It's an out branch of mapping, but unlike a regular map, GIS is using multiple layers of data. So in the same map, you can have the physical geography of an area, but you could also have the cultural geography. This was really important to us when we were working in the beginning of the Ebola outbreak, because it was an area that hadn't been mapped before. So we needed to know where villages and roads were. We needed to know where the bridges were so that we could reach villages. We heard a lot of rumors about an area where there were cases, where there were sick people, where there were more than the usual number of funerals. And we didn't know where they were or how to reach them. Once we had maps of the areas, we could actually plan out strategically how to reach them. One of the really difficult things in Ebola is that we felt like we were always running after cases. GIS was really important to us when we were able to map the exact location of cases and then also how many cases had been found in each location. In that way, instead of simply sending medical teams to places that already had cases of Ebola, we could also send health educators to places that were geographically proximate but didn't yet have cases of Ebola. And that was really the first step that we were using to try to prevent the spread of the virus into new communities. It meant that we worked faster, it meant that we worked with better information, we could be more strategic, and ultimately we saved more lives because we had better mapping available to us.